Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Stoic Toad, and today I'm going to be talking about how parallel lives work, how how alternate timelines work, and how your life in parallel timelines actually functions. And I made a video about this a long time ago. And I was going back through my old videos, I realized that only had 119 views. So I'm probably going to delete some old videos that don't have very many views, and basically just replace them with new videos that will be more knowledgeable and better in most ways so yeah here's the deal uh how parallel lives as i called them then work or alternate timelines is that i have to make a diagram i have to make a drawing i'll be right back all right i am back and basically here's how it works right so you have this uh first diagram here I don't know if you can read that or if it's reversed, but anyway, if it is reversed, I'll flip the camera. I'm pretty sure it is. So, as you can see here, this is this says soul, okay? This is your higher self or what you perceive as God, and you'll see that it, it slowly tapers down from the source energy, which is up here, into these little spikes and these little spikes are all individual egos or spirits they're all individual versions of yourself and from your perspective they would all be completely separate beings from you they wouldn't they don't have to necessarily be anything like you they don't have to have the same genetics and they don't have to have the same family but basically they all break down to being a part of this soul the same soul okay now all these different ego minds live in different universes. They live in different timelines because how different timelines work is every time you make a decision or every time something happens in a way where it could have happened differently or it might have happened differently, well, that breaks off into another timeline, a different version of the universe entirely. And so, uh, as you probably know by now, there's hundreds of different versions of the universe. So, now... We have, well, how do these different souls work? Are we all just part of the same exact soul? Well, kind of, except that soul is called Source, or God, okay? So, as you can see up here, uh, this is God, okay? And these bumps down here are individual souls. So, Source Energy focuses, it so focuses itself into, like, billions upon trillions of individual souls, which break themselves into billions upon trillions of individual egos and individual egos make archetypes in their minds and archetypes make their own tiny versions of their personalities and it basically all just breaks down to the atomic level everything just breaks down into smaller parts from the original source okay so i don't even know if you could see that but yeah that's basically how how all of that works put that back all right so, I'm going to give you an example, okay? Say you're at a restaurant and you have two choices, okay? Now, you always have more than two choices. Keep that in mind. You have two choices, okay? Now, and currently you're on a vegan diet or something or a vegetarian diet. You choose to get a steak, okay? So, you get a steak. You break your diet. That changes every future event in your life in some kind of way. That's a different timeline, okay? Now another one is you choose to get salad, then your life stays on a single track. It stays on its most likely timeline. All right. Now, basically, you have like a hundred options at every restaurant you go to or every inning you go to, and that all breaks into a completely different universe, even if it's such a small thing as getting a different meal. Okay, now take this, okay? You were born uh, with your fingernail grows quicker than another fingernail, all right? Well, that's going to break into a different universe because in a different universe, it's this fingernail that grows quicker. In another universe, it's this fingernail that grows quicker and every other fingernail. Okay, then uh, you say you say you were born with an IQ of 170. What about 171, 172, 70, 90, 193, 200? You were born with all these different statuses of IQ or intelligence levels and... Basically, even if a cell in your body is slightly in a different direction or functions slightly differently, if a single atom in your body is in a different place, 
it will form a new universe. That's why universes can be infinitely similar, because every particle in this universe can determine whether or not a new universe will be formed, because it can move in a direction that it was not supposed to. I'm going to tell you about chaos now, okay? So, basically, a way that you can practice shifting into multiple universes, or what I like to call drifting, uh, and actually I have a symbol to talk about drifting. See this owl? Well, owls are actually enemies with crows, which is where that feather came from. That's chaos, so drift. Okay? So, to drift, all you have to do is make the universe that you're in less likely. Hang on. Okay, and to make the universe that you're in less likely, all you have to do is make your behavior less likely. Okay, that's the only way that you can control it. Or, okay, if you want to incite chaos or chaos drifting, all you have to do is turn something upside down that you wouldn't ever turn upside down, okay? Okay, so say you have an empty garbage can. You turn it upside down before you go to bed at night. And then you turn it back right side up when you wake up. Or throughout the day, you just move random objects in minuscule ways that uh, no one really is going to notice. Or uh, you do some kind of ritual or something. And now I'm not saying a ritual is in there has to be meaning to it. You can walk down the hallway in some kind of weird, oblong sort of way. That will make your behavior less likely. That will branch off into a new universe. It'll make every event in your life less likely the more you do that. Okay? And then it's all up to your will. After you make everything unlikely, you kind of scattered all the likely events, and now it's kind of all at your fingertips. At this point, whatever you attract into your life is going to be attracted into your life. It speeds up the rate of your own manifestation, or your own tiny jumps, your own tiny universal jumps, okay? Because it's not necessarily likely that you'll get $1,000, but uh, nothing else that happened in your life was that likely. So maybe you will, maybe you'll just magically have $1,000, and I'm not saying that's going to happen because it probably won't, it didn't happen to me. But a lot of other very weird things have happened to me by doing small drifts like that. And so that's how you cause chaos, uh, or chaos drifting. So, and another thing about parallel lives is that you can also enter completely parallel lives instead of perpendicular lives. You can enter parallel lives. Uh, and what I mean by that is you can enter a life where past events happen differently. That's what I call a parallel life. A, a branch off life or a different universe, a smaller, a smaller difference in your life would be changing a future event. That's a bit easier. It's manifesting something. It's kind of like manifestation. You can change a future event or you can change a present event as it's happening. You can morph its configuration change a past event, that's more of a parallel timeline jump, okay? And to do that, you have to use more focus. And I have videos about how to jump to parallel timelines. I have, I have lots of videos about that. I'm not going to give you any techniques in this video because this is just how they work. But yeah, that's basically how they work. Basically, your ego mind, what you think of as yourself, is not just yourself. It's only a hair of yourself. Just a little hair of yourself. And if you expand your consciousness up to what you believe is God, that still isn't your entire self. And even if you expand your consciousness to the maximum, if you break through on DMT or any other psychedelic, it doesn't matter how deep you go, you can never experience the reality of the fullness of what source actually is because it's incomprehensible and it's ever expanding. The universe, ever since the Big Bang, has been getting bigger and it continues to get bigger and that is why the galaxies spread away from each other. It, no one in existence has ever experienced what God really is, what the source really is. And people think it's a person. People think it's uh, an energy, and it's not either of those things. It's a particle and it's a wavelength. It's light, but it's also atoms. It's everything in existence. Everything is a part of it, but we think of ourselves as something smaller because of an illusion of the veil. And the veil is the difference between this dimension and the next dimension, this dimension and the spirit dimension, or the dimension where you see giant dragons flying in the sky, or worms that are coming out of the ground that are like 99 feet long or something like that. When the difference goes away between those two things, then you can see the 
fullness of whatever you are able to see with your ego mind. But never has anyone ever seen the reality of the entirety of God. It's just not possible. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe, and comment. Goodbye.